Hey folks, Jordan and Lone Oak Survival. So let's talk about leapfrog, right? It's the method where you go from point A to point B. You know how to shoot a bearing now because of the last video and you can travel there. However, there's some stuff that you got to know prior to that. One is your pace count and you got to know how to make pace speeds and use them, right? So let's cover pace count real quick again. Well, pace count is, is essentially you're going to be traveling in a already measured out area of either 100 meters, 100 yards, one of the two. However, just note, you can't measure out in 100 yards and then count in meters. No, if it's yards, it's yards. If it's meters, it's meters. It has to be that way. If not, you mix max the two. It's going to be all jumbled up and you're going to be all wrong in your actual distance you travel. So, speaking back to this, right? I use meters because it's divided by 10. It's just a lot easier than yards, to be honest. But my thing is this, right? So I measure out 100 meters, and I'm going to walk that on both flat and even, uneven, uphill and downhill with my load on. So whatever you throw in your backpack on average to go on day hikes, say you're going up to Pitcher Rocks or whatever, and you're going to be hiking that trail. Whatever your backpack's going to weigh at the beginning, right, you measure with that weight. Whatever you're putting in there, that's what you want. And yes, you always go back and redo this whole thing if you plan on going on longer treks or shorter treks. Whatever it's going to be, you can always go back and redo this to find a different pace count for a different way to bag. Okay? You're un unloaded, right? Okay, that's just you. What do you normally carry every single day, your EDC, and you measure out 100 meters is how far you walk. Now, I always recommend to people do this four times over. So you're going to go there. Okay, it's say whatever it is. Come back back and forth, back and forth, right? For every four of those, okay? And then you find the median number for all four different terrains. Mine happens to be 72. That's how far it takes me to walk uphill, downhill, uneven and flat terrain with the load on. Granted, the video I did back then was with a 55 pound backpack on. I should probably change it up myself. Um, for the most part, because I don't really carry my big survival bag with me everywhere I go. I usually just carry my smaller one. Either way, I digress. So what you want to do from there, understand that, okay, my pace count 72 per 100 meters. Now let's talk about pace speeds. Pace speeds, there's a longer strand of nine beads. There's going to be a shorter strand of, I don't want to say four, but it's going to really be depending on how far you feel like walking, let's say. Let's just use four as a good example, right? So say we're walking through the woods and I reach 72. Okay, 72 paces, right? So you're going to drop down one bead. That represents 100 meters. And you repeat this process until you get up to nine. Now, when all nine beads are down, right, you walk 100, excuse me, 72 more paces in my case, and then you drop one of the big ones down, one of the bigger beads or different color beads, whatever it's going to be, and that represents one kilometer. You just walked 0.62 of a mile. So 1,000 meters equals one kilometer, which equals 0.62 of a mile. Okay, that's how pace speeds work. So when you understand those two concepts beforehand, you can now do leapfrog, which is quite simple. Now, when you do leapfrog, guys, or any navigational trick, what you want to do is have some kind of journal with you. It can be a cheap one from the dollar store like this, or it can be one of those all-weather proof writing pads, whatever you want to prefer. It's not up to me, it's up to you. What you want to do, though, is write stuff out like this. Okay, you want to put bearing and a start point, paces, and then notes. So it doesn't mean you're going to count out, say, 72 paces, so like 100 meters. Okay, it's got to be perfect with that. No, it could be 72 paces. It could be 65. It could be 32. It could be whatever. That's why that separate column is right there. So say our start point was, uh, oh man, I don't know. Let's use the other page right here that I wrote down yesterday. 248 degrees southwest, okay, say a walk 200 paces that way, right, and say off to my right, there's an imaginary river right there, okay, I'm going to write down river to right, say of trail or whatever, to right, okay, you're going to write that down, say our next one, so number one, two, three, and so on and so forth, Say that's, uh, I don't know, 215 degrees south, and then we're going to walk 135 paces, so on and so forth, guys, you get it. 
basically what you want to do, and excuse my atrocious writing, I just scribbled down. It's going to look like this, okay? You got your bearing right here, paces you walked, and notes of anything that stands out to you that's a natural, natural thing, like a down tree that's huge, an open meadow, body of water, river, pond, lake, stream, whatever. Just stuff that you can identify and you understand is going to be there. It's not going to go away anytime soon. That's what you want to write down in your notes. All right, so that's that's how you get to this point. So now the actual method of leapfrog. It's super simple, guys. If I was just going to do that in this video, this video would maybe be like 30 seconds long. So we're going to whip out our compass, open it up. You want to start at something somewhere. So like say this tree, right? Put my back against it, backpack on, or whatever, even if it's like a stump or a rock, put your heels against that. What you want to do is you want to pick an object out in the distance. So why don't you guys come here, stand next to me, right? So say we're going for that, I'll go for that big eastern white right there, okay? So our back's against the tree or object, whatever it's going to be, heels, doesn't matter. Take this. Full presentation, like we talked about. Catch that. Need on the doghouse. All right, we're gonna bring it back to us. Look at our bearing, which is 150 southeast. If you guys want to know, you can always make a separate column too when you do your columns to put a reverse azimuth in there if you want to. Not totally necessary to do. So, that right there is your bearing. You're going to walk to that object, put your back against that object, and continue forth. That's what's going to happen. Now, you can sit there and you can do the Boy Scout way, and you can actually have your compass out, make sure you're totally on trail. Um, I would recommend that if you're in the woods, just at least to stop and look every, like, I don't know, 25 paces or so, something like that. Up to you. Just to make sure you're actually still on that straight and narrow path because if you don't in the woods you will eventually start doing this and be all off and whatnot but if it's more of like an open area yeah you don't really need to have your compass out you can put that away and you can walk to that object because you can walk in a straight line naturally anyways guys that's leapfrog thanks for watching guys as always see frosty wrap up yeah bless